What's going on, Shoe Fanatics? Welcome back to the channel. It's been an absolute terror trying to cop during 2021. Uh, that's why it's been so few far videos in between, but I got a good one today. I'm not gonna talk about the other stuff. We'll get to that another time. Let's check it out. Let's get this unboxing done. Do me a favor, stick around, watch for the on foot, watch for the late swaps. Let's talk about the, um, the value of this thing too. And I'll tell you why it's important to me. We're also gonna do a comparison to a shoe that's very close to this one here. So let's get into it. You already know, standard just do it box, straight from Nike sneakers app. Open this bad boy up. You already know we do these boxes around here. No love for the boxes. All right, real quick, inverse Nike Air Jordan 1 box. Whenever you see this red and black, that typically means it's a women's Air Jordan 1 exclusive. That's exactly what this one is. Tag reads, women's Air Jordan 1 high OG, black, black metallic, silver. This particular size is a size 12. Typically in a woman's shoe, you're gonna wanna go up 1.5 up from your normal size. If you're normally a size 10, in a women's shoe, you're gonna wanna order a size 11 and a half. My particular case, I'm typically a size 11, so I wanted a 12 and a half. But although this shoe was supposed to be an extended sizing on sneakers app, this shoe instantly loaded out from a size 12 and below. Now, I'm not quite sure if this shoe had the extended sizes only go out during the exclusive access period. That's to be determined. All I know was the bigger sizes was gone come actual release day Saturday. These are silver. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the Air Jordan 1 Women's Silver Toe Silver Metallic. Let's talk about this shoe a little bit. Now, initially, Nike has been having a lot of problems with the distribution. That's particularly in case because of the inclement weather down there in Texas and all over the country. So again, prayers to our brothers and sisters down there in Texas, you know, it's uh, quite a thing. When this shoe came out, there was no option for two day shipping. That's been a lot of releases that's been coming out from Jordan brand and Nike in particular. What Nike is essentially saying, they're not gonna be able to keep up with the shipping demands due to inclement weather and other factors. Problem is, when I logged back into the sneakers app, for days after I hit on this shoe, there was no indication that the shoe had been processed for shipping. As a matter of fact, initially it said process for return. That sent up a red flag to me immediately. So I thought for some strange reason, Nike was gonna cancel this order. Thankfully, it didn't. Eventually, I contacted customer service. They told me that there was just a glitch in the system. My shoe would be here immediately. I'm actually a lot happier with the shoe than I thought it was gonna be. At first glance, we're obviously aware that this silver metallic is definitely a shiny, bright silver. I thought it was gonna be so bright in fact that it would take away from the shoe. That being said, what was really gonna be most important to me was the quality of the leather itself. While certainly not bad, the quality of the leather itself is not that, that great. Not as good as I was expecting anyway. Let's take a look at the colorways around the shoe. First and foremost on the toe there, there is that metallic silver color, giving this shoe the name Metallic Silver Jordan 1, or AKA Metallic Toe. Also around the toe cap is a nice, pretty decent leather. Again, not as soft as I quite was hoping. Coming up the side of the eyelids, it's also that leather continues all around the collar, as well as on the side where the white portion is at and the black swoosh itself. That silver really pops around the back side as well as the anklet. Now this is a synthetic leather, which is not particularly the best thing, but it's not bad either. It makes for the shoe to be pretty comfortable and have a lot of movement. I think this shoe should hold up for creasing pretty well, but time will tell on that. As you can see here, it has a very nice embossed Jordan logo on it, that I think is really clean and pressed in there, thanks to the synthetic material, as well as the contrast from the silver itself. Standard nylon tongue with a standard nylon tongue tag. Black sole with the white outsole to give some great contrast, which is really nice. I'm telling you in hand, this shoe looks a lot better than I thought it would. I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Initially, I thought that the silver was gonna be too overbearing for the shoe, and especially if you go outside, which we're gonna do an off foot later, it might drown the shoe out and make it look too Tin Man-ish. But so far, I'm really digging the cutter blocking. Now this could have been exclusively for the ladies or just to punch the shoe up a little bit, but the interior sock liner is a nice satin material. That satin material goes all around the ankle collar, all the way down, it does feel smooth to the touch and gives a little bit of a elegant look to it. So hopefully you ladies were able to cop this shoe, but this is really nice. Now again, this is a size 10 and a half, which I normally I'm an 11, a size 10 and a half in men's. I don't think I robbed too many of you ladies of this pair, but you know, 
forgive me if I did. So the only reason I'm gonna talk about resale of this particular shoe is because after the shoe came out, again, due to maybe some cancellations or just the climate in general, the price of this shoe instantly went up. Now, when I say instantly went up, it went somewhere between $270 to $300 per pair on StockX. Now, the only reason that's important to me is because, listen, I'm a father, I'm a husband. All this behind me is nothing more than rubber, leather, and synthetic materials. If I had to get rid of it all today for any particular reason, I'd do it in a heartbeat. So that's why when I buy these shoes, I wanna make sure I'm making the best investment I possibly can. But definitely know that if I had to sell this shoe for an emergency, it's gone in a heartbeat. Now that's the only reason why I keep up with prices. Now the shoe itself is a take on the initial Air Jordan 1 gold toe metallic that came out a couple of years ago. Now the difference between that shoe and this one is the material. That shoe is made out of patent leather just like its cousin that came out last year. The gold and black patent leather on that shoe is similar to this. On this particular shoe, it's just replaced with that synthetic leather again. Now the shoe I really want to compare it to was released last year in January sometime. Now of course is the Air Jordan 1 UNC Chicago women's exclusive. Earlier that year, in my opinion, this shoe set the bar for the quality of the Jordan 1. The leather material is extremely soft, extremely buttery. The shoe feels good, and I thought they did a great job with the execution of the shoe. This shoe too also came with a leather hang tag that adorns the side of it. And as you can see, this shoe is a cousin of this particular UNC Chicago colorway. And the only thing I'm disappointed with this shoe about is that the leather quality is not quite as plush as the UNC Chicago colorway. Having both these guys in hand though, I do think this color blocking is much better than this one. And don't get me wrong, I think this is a fire, fire, fire shoe. All that being said, this one is definitely one for the collection. This is gonna get a lot of wear. I can't say as my man, Mr. Unloved Ones on Twitter says, uh, relegate these to beater status, but these are definitely gonna get some wear. Typically, I have a rule. I don't wear my Jordans until one year after the day they release. There's so many people getting these GR shoes, I never know if I'm gonna run into a person who has the same shoe on the same day I have. But these may get some heavy use during the end of the summer, going into the fall. As usual, Jordan Brent hooked us up with a spare pair of laces. And those laces are very glittery, very silvery, very metallic-y, and most likely will never make their way into this pair of shoes. What I'm initially thinking is I'm gonna go ahead and throw a white lace in here and lace them up with the black so you can see how they contrast with both. In a shoe like this, you definitely wanna accentuate the existing colors, that being silver, white, and black. Like I mentioned, this is definitely one for the collection. The silver on the shoe is thankfully not too bright. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. It's definitely like more of a eggshell or a satin silver than a high gloss or a semi-gloss silver, which makes the shoe executed that much better. I'm looking forward to keeping this and putting it right here in the box. Let's go ahead, go outside, check this on feed out. I appreciate you guys sticking around with me. Do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, do all that good stuff. This is Air Jordan 1 Silver Metallic, AKA Silver Toe. Peace out.